Hello YouTube, Danny Boy EDH here with another Commander deck tech for you. Today I'm talking about Tuvasa the Sunlit. Uh, one of my favorite Bant Commanders. Uh, it's an enchantment deck. Let's take a look here. We got a 1-1 one, one for 3 mana, a blue, a white, and a green. Uh, it's a legendary Merfolk Shaman that gets plus 1, plus 1 for each enchantment you control. So it can get pretty big, and whenever you cast your first enchantment spell each turn, draw a card. Uh, and that ability is going to be giving us a lot of draw throughout the game as well, because as you can imagine, this is primarily an enchantment deck. So we'll start off with the auras, because one of the main win cons is definitely just pumping up Tuvasa really big with aura spells. Uh, the first one here, Ethereal Armor, will basically double Tuvasa's effect, giving plus one, plus one additionally for each enchantment you control, and also gives you First Strike. Ranker for plus two, plus O, oh, and Trample. And whenever Ranker is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return it to your hand. And Daybreak Coronet will give you plus three, plus three, First Strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink. It's probably one of the best auras in the game. And uh, the only thing is you do have to have another aura on it to cast it. Armadillo Cloak and Unflinching Courage. Basically two of the same card. For uh, one, a green and white gives plus two, plus two, Trample, and Lifelink. And Angelic Destiny will give plus four, plus four, flying, and first strike. We'll also make it an angel. And similar to Rancor, when it's when an enchanted creature dies, return it to its owner's hand. So that's how we're gonna make Tuvasa really big, and now we want to make sure we can get through. So we got Spirit Mantle and Unquestioned Authority to give pro creatures. Spirit Mantle will give you plus one, plus one, and Unquestioned Authority will draw you a card when it enters. Shield of the Oversoul and Steel of the Godhead uh, will give you some evasion. Uh, here we got plus two, plus two, flying and indestructible, as long as the creature is green and white, which, of course, Tuvasa is. And Steel of the Godhead will give plus two, plus two, lifelink, and unblockable, as long as the creature is white and blue. And once we start getting through for unblockable damage, we will hopefully start to draw off of these effects. We got Curiosity, which will deal uh, on damage, will draw you a card. Um, Staggering Insight will give uh, plus one, plus one, lifelink and a combat damage draw, and Ophidian Eye gives you a draw on combat damage as well as a flash, so if you're really uh, looking for it, you could cast it on someone else's turn because uh, with Tuvasa's ability, uh, it's each turn, so if you're casting enchantment spells on your opponent's turns, you can draw then as well. Eolumbra also has flash, uh, and gives plus one plus one in totem armor, so rather than having Tuvasa get destroyed, it will simply destroy the aura instead. Righteous Authority gives plus one plus one for each card in its controller's hand, and in this deck we're definitely going to be drawing a lot of cards. Um, and it also gives you an extra draw during your draw step, so get ready to draw some cards. Shielding Plax will give you Hexproof, and it will draw you a card when it enters the battlefield. So it's a good way of uh, keeping Tuvasa protected. Oh, there it is. And there's it. Curator's Ward also gives Hexproof, and when Enchanted Permanent leaves the battlefield, if it was Historic, uh, artifact, legendaries, and sagas are historic. Draw two. So it's nice to, because uh, we are, this is definitely a Tron deck. We're going to be piling a lot of our resources into Tuvasa, so we really don't want to have the commander get blasted. Uh, Sovereigns of Lost Alara has an exalted trigger, 
Uh, whenever a creature you control attacks alone, uh, which Tilvase will usually be attacking alone, you may search your library for an aura card and enchant that creature, uh, put it on the battlefield. So, basically, you can swing with Tuvasa and then plop one of these big boys on the field here. Eldrazi Conscription gives you plus 10, plus 10, Trample, and Annihilator. You won't get the Annihilator trigger if you're cheating it onto the battlefield, but plus 10, plus 10, and Trample is uh, pretty huge. And Colossification, uh, when it enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature. If you're cheating it onto the battlefield with that ability, you're going to be tapped already anyway, tapped and attacking, so it's basically just plus 20, plus 20. So if you got some form of evasion on there, you're going to be swinging for lethal commander damage. And Finest Hour, another exalted trigger. Uh, whenever a creature attacks alone, get plus one, plus one until end of turn. And also, if it's the first combat phase of the turn, untap that creature. After this phase, they're an additional combat phase. So if you had both of these on the field and you swung with Tuvasa, you would get plus two, plus two from both of these triggering, and then you could find something like uh, protection from creatures, drop a spirit mantle on there, and then you'll get to untap, swing again, give you an additional plus two, plus two, so now you're at plus four, plus four, and you can put a classification on there, and you are swinging for unblockable lethal commander damage. Uh, now let's get into the creatures. We got Core Spirit Dancer, which will draw when you cast an aura spell, and if you're putting auras on that, it can get pretty big as well. Starfield Mystic makes your enchantments cost one less, and whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. Herald of the Pantheon makes your enchantments cost less as well, and you gain one life each time you cast one. Heliod's Pilgrim, when it enters the battlefield, will search for any aura that you need. Satessan Champion has a Constellation trigger. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it and draw a card. More draw triggers for our enchantments. There's plenty of those in the deck. Uh, Siona, when she enters, look at the top seven cards. So you're digging pretty deep there and reveal an aura from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And when an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, create a 1-1. One, one. Uh, she does have an infinite combo, but it's not in the deck. Uh, I forget what the aura is called. Um, somebody can put that in the comments below. But uh, it's a good way to get some chump blockers. Seder Enchanter and Mesa Enchantress will draw you cards when you cast enchantments. And Bruna is a great late game card, Flying and Vigilance. Uh, and whenever it attacks or blocks, you may attach to it any number of auras on the battlefield, and you may attach to it any number of auras that could enchant it from your graveyard or hand. So, uh, if it's late in the game and your bin is filled up, that's going to be a good way to... Uh, protect yourself, especially with the vig Vigilance built in there. Now we got our uh, enchantment creatures. Destiny Spinner to make your creature and enchantment spells uncounterable. Eidolon of Blossoms uh, has another constellation trigger. Uh, whenever it or another enchantment enters, you draw a card. Uh, ETBs are a little more easy to abuse than the cast triggers. Kestia the Cultivator, it's a bestow creature, uh, could also be a commander of this deck. Um, it was one of the legendaries that came with the uh, pre-con. Uh, it's also got bestow, so enchanted creature can get plus four, plus four, and whenever enchanted creature or an enchantment creature you control attacks, draw a card. Whitewater Naiads, Constellation Trigger to give you Unblockable. And Nylia's Colossus has another Constellation Trigger that doubles target creatures' power and toughness until end of turn. So that's another way to get some uh, pretty serious commander damage going on. Ristic Study to draw cards. 
Enchantress's Presence will also draw when you cast enchantment spells. And Sigil of the Empty Throne will give you a 4-4 flying angel token whenever you cast enchantments. And uh, to protect ourselves here, sometimes we get uh, angels and other little soldier tokens and stuff, but a lot of times it's just Tuvasa. So we got a Ghostly Prison Propaganda and Sphere of Safety to prevent our opponents from swinging into us. And we've also got Vow of Wildness and Vow of Flight. You can use them to buff Tuvasa or you can enchant an opponent's creature and it will prevent the creature from attacking you or a planeswalker you control. Vow of Wildness gives plus three plus three and trample and can't attack you and Vow of Flight gives plus two plus two and flying and can't attack you. Stasis Snare has flash so you can get a draw trigger on your opponent's turn and it will exile target creature and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. Song of the Dryads and Imprisoned in the Moon are good ways to deal with problem permanence, uh, basically turning them into lands. And this deck runs no counter spells, so Ashiox Erasure is about as close as you're going to get. Uh, has flash as well. When it enters the battlefield, exile target spell. Your opponents can't cast spells with the same name as the exiled card. And when it leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to its owner's hand. That's a good way to shut down someone's commander as well. Estrid's Invocation uh, enters as a copy of any enchantment, except it gains at the beginning of your upkeep. You may exile this enchantment. If you do, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So that's a really good way to uh, repeat the constellation triggers and just use whatever is the most uh, helpful enchantment at the time. Mirror Maid will also copy an enchantment or an artifact if you need it. And Estrid is the only Planeswalker, also another possible commander from the pre-con. Uh, it can give you a plus two to untap each enchanted permanent you control. And minus one allows you to put a mask with totem armor onto something. So you could always, if you had Tuvasa on the field and you had an aura on there that had totem armor, you could put a mask onto the aura basically giving you double totem armor, making it super hard to remove. Or you can just start uh, putting totem armor on whatever permanence you really don't want to see destroyed. And here we got the, uh, the one combo of the deck. Um, a Johnny's Chosen, Enchanted Evening, and Aura Shards. Um, a Johnny's Chosen, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield, you get a 2-2 cat. And Enchanted Evening will make all permanence enchantments in addition to their other types. So if you have a Johnny's Chosen and you play this, you'll create a cat. When the cat enters, it's going to be an enchantment. So you'll basically get infinite cats. Um, if you don't have Aura Shards on the field, it'll basically go to a draw because there's no way of stopping the triggered abilities from infinitely triggering. Aura Shards, however, whenever an enchantment, or whenever a creature enters, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. So you can use the ETBs from all the cats to destroy every permanent your opponents control, including lands, because they are enchantments in addition to their other types. And then after everything is wiped and you have an infinite army of cats, you can blow up probably Enchanted Evening or a Johnny's Chosen. Instance and Sorcery is not a whole lot in this deck. We got Path to Exile for some removal. Heroic Intervention is probably as close to a counterspell as we'll get besides Ashiox Erasure to give Hexproof and Indestructible. Idyllic Tutor will allow us to search for any enchantment, put it, put it into our hand. And then we got our board wipes. Wrath of God is... Well, like I said, we don't have too many creatures in this deck, so sometimes it's just better to wipe the board. Or if you have uh, Indestructible on Tuvasa, you can also wipe the board without concern. Winds of Wrath will destroy all creatures that are not enchanted. 
and they can't be regenerated. So usually if you're casting that, Tuvasa is already got some auras on it. Soul Ring is the only mana rock in the deck. And that is about it. So now let's just take a quick look at the lands here. Command Tower, Seaside Citadel, and Treva's Ruins will tap for all the colors that you need. Treva's Ruins will bounce a land to your hand when it enters, uh, but it does come in untapped. Hall of Heliod's Generosity will allow you to put a target enchantment from your graveyard onto the top of your library. Forge of Heroes can put a plus one plus one counter on Tuvasa. And as you can imagine, Tuvasa gets pretty big, so Moss Warp Bridge will allow with the hideaway to uh, cast something once Tuvasa gets to 10 power or greater. Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds, and Cross and Verge will allow you to search. Uh, these can get, this one can get a Shock Lands here. Uh, there's no f no uh, fetch lands in this deck besides the ones I just showed you. Um, so there's al there's always room to improve on these, but we got the uh, bounce lands as well. Basically, this deck really just lo draws a lot of cards, so usually not missing too many land drops. Uh, Temple of Plenty, Temple of Mystery, and Temple of Enlightenment will all scry on entering. Yavimaya Coast will enter untapped, but will ping you for damage to tap for blue or green. Blossoming Sands and Tranquil Cove, they both enter tapped, but you'll gain a life. We got five forests, seven plains, and seven islands. And that about wraps it up. Uh, this is a really fun enchantment-based deck. It, uh, yeah, it can be, uh, pretty intimidating once you get a uh, start piling the auras on to uh, Tuvasa and you get some serious uh, commander damage going there. It's a fun deck to play and uh, very rarely you'll, you'll get that combo to pop off as well. But uh, yeah, let me know what you, you guys think of the deck, if there's anything I missed, uh, and let me know what, what deck you want to see me show you next. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.